Dick Grayson may have his most hated foe blockbuster up against the ropes, but when his secret identity is in danger, will he be able to finish this job or will it finish him? Let's hop into the pages of Nightwing issue number 96 and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up from where the last issue left off, Blockbuster had come to Haven in an attempt to destroy it once and for all by setting it all ablaze. Obviously, Dick isn't going to let that happen, and as such, he swooped on in to try and stop him. Unfortunately, during the struggle, his mask ended up getting knocked off his face, revealing his true identity to Desmond. And why, yes, before you even have to ask, Desmond does have one of those great moments of supervillain realization. Oh, I didn't have two enemies this whole time, I only had one. And once my reinforcements get here, I'm not only going to go to work on you, Dick Grayson, I'm going to ruin the lives of everyone you've ever known or loved. This, of course, puts Nightwing in a rather interesting position. Blockbuster's reinforcements are on the way, and Dick himself can't call any reinforcements of his own because they're too busy dismantling Blockbuster's entire criminal operation. That means we have a whole ticking clock on top of the other ticking clock that was because these two are fighting in a building that is slowly but surely burning to the ground. Knowing that it's now 100% all or nothing time, Nightwing begins to absolutely unload on Blockbuster, not just physically, but also he gives him a hell of a talking to as well. Dick says that the thing he probably hates the most about Blockbuster is that he has all this amazing power, all of these resources, and he only ever uses it to hurt people. He already has the world, and yet he still somehow decided that that wasn't enough and that he was going to take and take from a city that was already suffering and on its last legs. And hey, speaking of the city, Batgirl shows up outside the burning library and realizes that all those homeless kids that Dick has been helping and a bunch of people from the community have actually showed up to try and put out the fire themselves. Once again, showing that all the good karma that Dick had put out in the universe has now returned to him a hundred times full when he absolutely needed it the most. The battle raging inside gets even more heated when Dick says if Blockbuster ever thought for a minute that he would allow him to hurt any of his friends, well, he doesn't know Dick and he doesn't know Nightwing very well. Also, because they're fighting in a library, Dick manages to smack Blockbuster in the face with a Herman Melville book. Yes, that's right, Dick slaps his villain with Moby Dick, which is pretty damn fitting too thematically when we stop and consider that Blockbuster has basically treated Dick Grayson like his own personal white whale ever since he came back and started using his money to try and fix the community. And speaking of the community, because they all showed up to help, they're actually there to see Nightwing give Blockbuster such an unholy beatdown. Desmond tries to regroup with his two chief henchmen, Electrocutioner and Brutal, only to realize that they've both turned on him. Why? Well, because of Barbara Gordon, of course. She's been going all through Roland Desmond's secret file so the Bat family and Titans could take it apart, and in her research, she discovered that Roland Desmond actually had a stake in Bloodhaven Penitentiary. A prison that we discover is way worse and way more torturous than even Blackgate Penitentiary in Gotham is. Brutal and Electrocutioner had both suffered because of the prison, and because apparently they hold very true to the idea of honor amongst thieves, they turn their back on their old boss, Blockbuster, and even really let the swears start to fly. Which, in a wonderful artistic choice, they decide to cover up with a bunch of Comic Code Authority stickers. So yeah, the day is essentially saved, but for Dick, it's admittedly something of a hollow victory. Haven has been ruined, and while they can rebuild, Nightwing worries about the safety of everyone around him, especially Barbara Gordon. These two have been doing the whole will they, won't they dance, basically since this new series began, and well, I'm happy to say they end up deciding that they most definitely will. Barbara says that Dick doesn't have to worry about anything because she's more than capable of handling herself in a fight. And despite everything that Dick may have learned from Bruce as a young sidekick, it actually is okay to be happy and content. These words really do end up touching Dick Grayson's heart, and he admits that he's probably never been happier than he is right here, right now in this moment with Barbara, and the two end up kissing, implying that maybe they're becoming something more official now. I mean, not that there was anything inherently wrong with them just being good friends who hang out together, have a great time, fight crime, and occasionally go to bed together. Of course, the question still remains, what exactly are they going to do with Blockbuster now? They've dethroned him, but he still has the information that Nightwing and Dick Grayson are the same person. Well, guess what? He won't live long enough to do anything with that information, as while running through a back alley, Blockbuster ends up coming face-to-face with Heartless, a man who he assumed he had killed. Heartless even goes as far as to make a wonderfully self-referential crack when he says, ah yes, you did kill me, but don't worry, I got better. Not only did Heartless get better too, he learned from his last run-in with Blockbuster and has brought with him a brand new, bigger, more powerful heart 
heart stealing gun so he can take Blockbuster's oversized heart. As the comic comes to a close, the mysterious serial killer vows that with Blockbuster defeated, there will be a power vacuum on the streets that he vows to fill. And so that was Nightwing issue number 96, everyone, and overall I thought it was a really solid, really fun, really enjoyable conclusion to this big Tom Taylor arc. In fact, in many ways, it feels like the closing of the first chapter in Tom Taylor's time on the series with a new exciting chapter on the horizon. Dick fought so hard to try and clean up Bloodhaven, now the question is, can he balance a superhero life and a love life and keep the city from falling back into corruption? Or is Bloodhaven, like Gotham, just one of those cities that seems to be totally invested in destroying itself over and over and over again? I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm definitely interested to see where this series goes from here, especially considering everything we have seen, well, what little we've seen of the post-Dark Crisis dawn of DCU stuff, wherein it actually looks like Nightwing is totally front and center for this brand new status quo shift. I don't know what that means for the universe, and I don't know what it means for this book, but hey, I'm certainly interested in seeing what a DC universe with more dick will be like. Overall, I think I'd feel comfortable giving this solid conclusion an 8 out of 10. Good stuff. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Cape Joel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye